Now, thanks to Anytime Fitness Glenelg, Beresford Wines and Bickfords Australia, it's Chewing the Fat with Bevan Jones. Well, g'day and welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. Today we're joined by another South Australian legend. He played 141 games for the Dogs, kicked 475 goals. Six times he was the leading goal kicker for Centrals, played three state games as well. It is Rudy Mandemaker. Great to have you on Chewing the Fat, mate. Thanks, Bevan. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, um, we'll get to your footy in a moment. You're involved with the Southern Cross Cleaning Group, of course, as their marketing manager. Talk to us about that role and how that's all come about. Um, I used to know the owner. Our kids went to school together and he was, I'd had enough doing, doing the pest control, so I went down and visited him and he gave me a job 15 years ago. So, um, sales and marketing, um, we do all the quotes and tenders. Um, originally we were turning over four million when we started, now we're probably up over 40. Um, we do a lot of government schools. Um, shopping centres, defence contracts, buildings in town, so everything that needs to be cleaned, we're happy to have a look at. A lot of golf days, I'd imagine, as well, being sales and marketing? Or uh, as yeah, no, a like? few, but it costs <laughs> us money because we, we sponsor, you know, we sponsor quite a few, so um, we're not all about take-take, we're happy to give back to the schools and clients and, and try and look after them as well. Terrific, good on you mate. Now uh, let's get to your career most importantly. Um, you were born in Victoria, country Victoria, and then you came and played for the for the Hawks. Didn't quite get an, a VFL game unfortunately, but then you came to Centrals as part of the John Platten deal. Uh, talk us through your journey and how it all happened. Um, well I was from a little country town called Puong in South Gippsland. Um, they had no under 10s, 12s, 14s, so I think I was 11 years old and Started straight in the thirds, under 16s and 17s, and played there. Um, Hawthorne used to have a, a squad called the, the Country Ice Squad, like an ice was like a small hawk. Um, so I got in that squad and ended up moving down to Melbourne and playing in the under 19s and reserves. Um, and then I'd had enough, a um, bit homesick, ended up going back to Puong. Um, Halfway through the year, Hawthorne asked me to come back, so I did, and we were sitting on top of the ladder, undefeated, and the local team lost the grand final. And then one of the last games of the year, I hurt my ankle, had to have a reconstruction. What happened during the year, though, they gave me a cheque for $300, and I thought, oh, shit, that's all right, not knowing that it was for my medical cover. So they had to have a board meeting to see if they'd pay for the operation, which they did. Got it done, come good, and then said, no, I've had enough, I'm going back home. Okay, and then uh, how'd you end up at the doggy, so? Um, well, I, I played that year in the grand final back home when we won, and then I was, I was working at Richmond at the SEC, and I, the boss comes in and says, I was a phone call for you, it's Cowboy Neil. And I, I sort of knew who he was, and I, you know, I didn't really believe it. So I got on the phone. Obviously, he played under Jeansy at Hawthorne, and they were looking for someone, so Jeansy recommended me come over for a year or two and then go back. Um, so I come over with Scotty Lee, spent the week here, and thought, oh, this is probably the best thing I can do is get away from all that trouble in Melbourne and basically make a fresh start and moved over in 86. And I mentioned before that um, six years in a row, you're the leading goal kicker for the Dogs. In 1987, you kicked 94 goals, so six off that magical 100, which was an incredible effort. Was there a time there where clubs were looking at you and um, potentially going and getting another VFL gig? Yeah, I was. Uh, Mick Malthouse came over and interviewed me at the old Overpass Tavern. Um, Brisbane offered me a contract to go up there. Um, wasn't too bad money then. It was a, like a $25,000 sign-on and 50, about 50,000, 60,000 to play. Um, signed for two years, but I thought with my complexion up in the Sunshine State, it wouldn't be too healthy. So I didn't go there, and then the next year, Sydney actually drafted me. I, I, I was on holiday in Cairns, and they said, oh, Sydney have drafted you. Because I think Cowboy Neil went up there. Um, but look, I signed a three-year deal with Centrals and ended up on that player retention scheme. And I thought, well, I probably shouldn't have been on it because I come over from Victoria and was to try and keep the South Australian players here. So I signed that and ended up with another 60, 70 grand out of that. So it was, it was worthwhile in the end. I think you made the right decisions for sure. So. Well, but I could have gone to Brisbane and made, you know, three times that. Um, but, you know, decided to stay here. But your loyalty for the dogs was, was fantastic. Yeah, so. it was, yeah. yeah. And uh, you were a very handy cricketer in the young years as well, Rudy. What made you choose footy over cricket in the end? Oh, 
cricket was just a bit of a, a bit of a pastime, you know, like coming from the country, you play footy, cricket, basketball, tennis, squash, you just get involved in everything. So a um, few of the boys played here, so it was just a matter of going out, having a hit, not much technique, just a swing of the bat and some of them would lob over the fence and some wouldn't, but you know, it was just a bit of fun. So footy was definitely always your uh, passion over the top of cricket? Yeah, well, oh yeah, cricket was good because we didn't really train a lot. Like I, I wasn't one of the best trainers or, you know. Um, the hardest we trained was when I was in that initial Crow squad um, and I was as fit as I'd ever been. Um, and then that year I did my hamstring two or three times like, you know, I was probably over fit. Uh, like I never knew what a hamstring was, but, <laughs> you know, being really fit and doing those 110 hundreds with Cornsy and that, um, I was probably the fittest I'd ever been, but once I started, um, after that initial pre-season, just got injured all the time. Yeah, it's um, no doubt all that running certainly uh, can't be that good on your Well, when you're full forward, you only yeah. need to read to run out of the square for 10 metres, so, <laughs> you know, you don't need all that. And let's talk about your days at the Doggies, um, where you were dominating. Obviously, there were some damn good full-backs back in the day that you would have played against. Um, who was your toughest opponent, though, Rudy, oh, and why? I always used to have a, a tough game against Tommy Warhurst. He never give you a lot and he'd always give you a whack behind the head. Um, Roger Delaney, um, you know, in that power team, they, they worked like a team pretty much. That's why they were so successful in those days. So probably those two, I'd say. And what was uh, so formidable about the Maggies back in those glory days uh, before it became the Centrals in the 2000s? Oh, I think similar to what Centrals were. Like they had a nucleus of, of blokes that played together for a number of years. Um, like they knew what their left hand was doing. Um, they were hard at it, had a great coach, um, you know, had blokes up forward that kicked kick plenty of goals like Hodges and Tyler and Smith and um, they were just really good all over the ground. And the Dogs dynasty, obviously uh, nine premierships out of the 11 grand finals in the 2000s, which was just a phenomenal effort. Um, what was it like being a part of that 2000 grand final, being a past player and um, getting the club's first ever premiership? Yeah, I said, I said to some people, I said, I don't care where I am. If Sentinels are ever in a grand final and they win one, I want to be there. Um, and look, and I was here and was over there. It was just amazing after the games, getting down in the rooms and then going out to Elizabeth and just partying for, you know, a number of days. Um, and as you said, like 12 grand finals in a row, it was just um, it was amazing. Well, we, we weren't as fortunate. Like, I think I played in four finals for four losing ones. We had some great players, but we just sort of didn't put it together as a team. And there was obviously those magpies in the bays back in those days as well that were pretty dominant. Yeah, and Nord were pretty strong too, so yeah. It was good footy in those days. It was before the, the two Adelaide teams went in to the AFL, so yeah, it wasn't a bad standard. And in terms of um, teammates, who were the, the funniest teammates you played with and why? Oh, look, Scotty Lee, was, I was from Victoria with him. Um, we'd get into a bit of mischief. We had the gold passes to McMahon's at Salisbury. So there'd be a big line up and we'd just come in and flash our, flash our gold pass and we'd get in. And um, I think we, we ended up getting thrown out a couple of times. But, and Gilbert McAdam, great player. Craig Brady, uh, the Victorian boys, David Finoff was there, Russell Shields from Hawthorne. Um, but it was a, a good group of blokes. We were pretty close and, and liked to have a good time, which Probably some of us may have been our downfall a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday night was the old spot hotel. Thursday night might have been Elizabeth Tavern. You know, Friday night go up to Smithfield. Um, Saturday night McMahon. So you know, living the dream. Yes, yeah. yes, it was. And you told me off air before about a story. This is a, an absolute classic. It's pretty much sums up your days as a as a young lad. Um, you were playing for VFL for the Hawks. And it was a reserves prelim final the night, bef uh, the night before. Um, you were out and having a few beers for a mate's 21st. And you uh, had a few too many and you weren't able to play the next day. Talk to us through that. Uh, it was actually the first semi-final. It was um, on a Sunday at the MCG. And my mate was 21 and went out and had a bonfire at the local Pool North Tennis Club. Um, had quite a few and got home fairly late or early in the morning and Got a lift down to the MCG, but um, some of the alcohol must have been easing out of my pores because the, the then coach, Des Ma, um, told me to grab my bag and go and sit up in the ground said, I don't think you can play. So, um, unfortunate thing, there was a big crowd there that day, but hey, these things happen. Once again, it's all about enjoying life though, isn't it, really? Exactly. So, Probably enjoyed yeah. it a bit too much. <laughs> but then once I moved over here, I settled down and got fit and, you know, um, 
86 after playing the first eight or nine reserves games. 87, I ended up playing state footy. So. And what was that like playing those three games for the state, playing with the best players from South Australia? Oh, it was amazing. It's probably the highlight of the career, you know. Um, playing against Ablett and, you know, playing t- Terry Downer, Chris Langford, like um, 50,000 people at Footy Park, beating the Vicks by four points. And then we went over to WA and beat WA over there. And like we were um, Australian champions for the first time for 50, 60 years. So. Big night over there, um, walking in after the casino about five, six in the morning, celebrating. Um, and Max Bashir put his put his um, MasterCard on the bar and said, help yourselves, boys. So oh, those we are the gave, days. We gave, that a, we gave that a good <laughs> shot. And uh, how do you see modern footy versus footy when you played yourself, Rudy? Um, it's not hard to turn off sometimes, um, just because it's like a game of keeping's off, you know. Blokes, 30, 40 possessions, a lot of uncontested stuff. They're, they're too afraid to kick down the line to a contest. Um, give me the crash and bash of the old days any time. But you got to marvel at their their fitness and athleticism. And look, it's still it's still good to watch. But um, once they chip it around, forwards, backwards, all the time, you know, you get a bit sick of that. You just want to see a, a good hard contest. Yeah, take me back to the good old days when we were seeing guys like yourself, Bag and Ten, or Scotty Hodges down the other end kicking 11, you know, and all that game back in the day when Ablett kicked 14 and Salmon kicked, I think, 10 in a yeah, game. That was yeah. just, those were the good old days, weren't they? So. Well, uh, exactly. And I still remember a grand, uh, one of the finals against St Kilda and Geelong, like Ablett, Ablett was down one end kicking goals and Lockett was down the, you know, the other end kicking goals. So um, the day of the full forward doing that sort of thing, I think that's um, far gone now. Well, you can only hope in the future we might still see 100 goals in a, in a year by some Oh, time. look, you may do, you may do, but there's there's not much space around anymore. When they haven't got the ball, they all flood back. Um, once they get it, they all take off and go forward. So there's yeah. not as much space as, as there used to be. And uh, no doubt there would have been some good pranks back in the day that you would have been involved in or would have seen firsthand at, at the footy club, perhaps uh, the dogs or the hawks. Anything you want to share? Oh, there's probably some that you can't share, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe most of it happened like in the shower area where it might have been a warm stream ending up on your leg, you know. So um, you can't give too much weight. Like Scotty Lee was probably, we used to call him agitator. He just used to agitate everyone. So he, he was the, um, the master of, of that sort of stuff. Oh, well, Rudy, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today and hearing these stories from you. Thanks to Jeff for filming for us and to uh, Southern Cross Cleaning, of course, letting us film here. Um, mate, congratulations on a stellar career and it's been awesome just hearing all about it. Thanks, Bevan. Lovely to catch up. Likewise.